beer are you drinking right now, dude? It's it's my uh, Moon Man from Wisconsin, dude. Oh, you still got some? Okay. Well, I was up in Wisconsin uh, Friday through Sunday. Okay. So, dude, this um, is my all-time favorite beer. It's from Belgium. Voodoo Ranger has okay. a 1985 IPA. Nice. Okay. It's it's top it's top three for sure. All right. And it's sold at Seven Eleven, which is dope. Seven Eleven. Yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. Nice. It's a company out from uh, Asheville, Virginia. Okay. And also, I just want to thank you because you are the most organized person that I've dealt with <laughs> and it's so helpful. And sometimes I don't take advantage of it and it's awesome. Oh, you're welcome, man. I, I gotta be organized, man. That's, that's my personality. Otherwise, well, you wouldn't think so right now. The garage is a freaking disaster, but Hey, mm-hmm. you know, I try that to happens. be. Dude, there is a fly. It landed right here on the microphone. Oh yeah. <laughs> so in the middle, I'm like, bow. we'll see. You'll get, lucky, You'll get them. You'll get them. You got an yeah. hour. <laughs> cool. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to episode eight of what we're calling the Broken Moto Show. And it's a collaboration series that I'm doing with my buddy Matt from How to Motorcycle Repair. My name is Cody from Motorcycle MD. Episode seven. Yeah, it's seven. Dang it. <laughs> Uh, episode I mean, we, seven. We could have just kept going. I mean, it absolutely. Matter. And we're going to keep going. All right. Bye. And this is a collaboration series that we do where we try to take in, or we don't try. You guys email us at what email, Matt? Askbrokenmoto at gmail.com. And with that information, we talk about it until our faces turn blue and uh, forget what we're talking about to begin with. But we try to help you guys out with some kind of question or answers uh, to whatever situation you're running into on your motorcycle that's right you summed it up what kind of rules do we have for that email so yeah uh when you submit these emails uh please include your first name and location your make and model mileage and uh be descriptive with the with the problem yeah and then dude everyone's got a smartphone take some video and talk in the video and we'll roll that in i think that's awesome because uh a video is even better than pictures but pictures yep. work too. So if you could do that, that'd be awesome. Pro tip. If you try talking while your motorcycle is running, it likely will not pick it up. Yeah. So yeah. just a pro tip for you guys. Yeah. I, we, we struggle with that, obviously, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes, <we do. laughs> well, cool. Let's start off with question number one. Let's try to blaze through these. We'll see what we can do. Um, I'll start off with the first one. Yeah, go for it. Hey, guys. 1993 CB400 Super 4. Called the NC31 uh, first gear issue is the heading of this email. I have a Japanese import CB400 SF. And just to pause right here, I don't know if you know what this bike is, dude, but I didn't. And because it's an import, so it's not over here. And right. it is a sweet looking bike. Um, they actually had like, I was doing some research on it and they had like, four different models and the last then like the newest versions they came out with all had VTEC in them so we have a, a CB400 with that goes into fuel injection in like the early or mid to late 2000s or 90s fuel injected and with VTEC so oh, that's, that's crazy a pretty sweet it looked like the uh, CB919 Hornet if okay if you're familiar with that but um so, so now he included a pick with it yeah he did which looks nothing like the factory one okay, but I was gonna say yeah I mean yeah. okay and his is a carbureted model versus the ones I was just talking about. But, okay. Okay, so virtually no mechanical changes. Just an end can. So a, a, just a muffler. Slip but on. The pictures, I don't know. Maybe his definition of mechanical changes are different from mine. But his bike's been radically changed. Yes, it has. Yeah. So it says right here. It has an R1 front end. The motor ran pretty well, but I'm having an issue with first gear. When cold, the bike goes into first nicely, crisp, and has a good click in. Um, However, when when warmed, the bike really struggles to go back into first from neutral. Any ideas? As mentioned, it only happens when hot. Bike has 3,600 
miles um, on the clock. Also, although I think this is unrelated, going from fifth to sixth is sticky all the time. I have to put a lot of pressure on the gear selector foot, the gear select foot lever. This issue also sometimes presents itself as false neutrals. Does it sound like the clutch needs to be replaced? I can try to supply a video if this would be helpful for diagnosis. Thanks, Steve from Manchester, UK. And we will post a picture of his bike probably now or during while I was talking. What do you think? Dude, I have no idea. Um, okay. um, it, it's weird that it's, it's doing it cold versus hot. Mm -hmm. I would check maybe the clutch adjustment. I don't know if this is cable or hydraulic. Um, I'm pretty sure it's going to be cable. I would think it's cable. Yeah, probably. Um, it's 400. So obviously check that. But um, other than that, I really, I don't, I don't really know. Okay. You got any ideas? Yeah. So what I think that uh, cable adjustment is vital. So what you said right off the bat is the cheapest route to start diving into this issue. Um, you got to have free play in the, in the, clutch lever i have a video i'll post it in, in the description on just making sure that you do have that free play if your clutch lever is like has no slack whatsoever um you are prematurely wearing out the clutch um, yeah. that may have been happening before you got the bike or it may be happening now or you may notice that you did have free play and now you don't okay which can happen so as we know matt clutch plates heat up and warp right when they get hot most of the time when the damage is already done, the clutch is smoked, it's happening all the time. But in this case, what could be happening is as the clutch is heating up and there is some slight wear going on, it's making itself more noticeable when everything heats up. So you got all the metal parts heating up. You have all these things going on um, right. that we wouldn't really think about all too often, but it's happening. Um, so I think that you either have really bad adjustment going on. There's no slack in the clutch lever. A lot of times when there's no slack in the clutch lever and you adjust it out and you have the good free play and you go to shift while it's running from neutral to first and you just, you keep skipping over neutral, you know, it's just going right in the first or whatever the case may be. It's, a, it's definitely going to be a clutch issue. Um, if you have, if you don't have any free play, adjust it out. If you do have free play and it's still doing it, I would open the system up and have a new clutch pack ready to go because that's really the only thing that it could be because it's not slipping out of gear so it's not right. a trans issue it's not you know it's not grinding the whole time that he's trying to shift it in i just killed that fly nice done i told you to get it it was just chilling right on my arms a little <laughs> simple slap <laughs> yeah so well, that's I, what i got for that yeah i mean i, I was going to mention um you, what you could do is turn the bike off and then manually shift it through the gears. And if that is okay, then you know it's not the transmission. Yeah. So, you know, then it narrows it down to like a clutch issue, like you said. Right. So. Yeah. And the fifth and sixth being sticky, I'm not too sure what that is. I would check either the pivot that the shifter is on, if it does have a pivot, um, and try looping that up. But as far as that being sticky, I think it's it's. I think he was right with saying it's somewhat unrelated. I think it's just a a, a little bit of a nuance to him. Um, yeah. But if the clutch is slipping and the plates are starting to warp because as they heat up, they kind of go from this to like more like that, and the clutch is always trying to disengage, um, which gives the transmission trouble whenever it wants. You may be slipping up in the top end, five and six. Who knows? Gotcha. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, good info, man. Question but nicely done. Number thanks, brother. Question number two. Go ahead and take it. Uh, first off, I want to thank ah. like the eight or so people, dude, that bought us a beer back in episode five. Was it? I think in five think we so. we mentioned it, and then um, these eight people have bought more beers than we know what to do with right now. Absolutely. I mean, I filled up a cooler over there, so we're we're good <laughs> for a while. So no, it's so, super cool. And I forgot to let the system collect first names because I want to mention these people by first yeah. name, but all we got is emails and um, I can't make out first names from a lot of them. So right. you know who you are. Thank you so much for the beer. So Next time we'll give you guys a shout out, but yes. 
yeah, it was t- like that night they were flooding in. And I was like, this is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Cool. For sure. Here's to you guys. You guys are champions among men. Yeah. All right. Uh, question number two comes from uh, Alex. All right. He's got a 98 GSX 600F. So it's a Katana, Suzuki Katana. And severely struggling with RPMs. First of all, I love the show. Very educational and deserves way more recognition. Anyway, here's my problem. I bought a Suzuki GSX600F out of 98 about two years ago. It's my first bike and it's great. However, it had real bad fuel economy, so I rebuilt the entire carbs about a month ago. Since then, it is more responsive and sounds healthier in general. Problem is since rebuild, it won't go through all the rpms anymore in the higher gears and six gear it won't go past 6k at all even if i shift down it just will not go past it i used to go top speed at around 220 kilometers an hour now only at 140 i have no idea what that is in mile an hour but anyway that's cruising that's like that's cruising dude yeah hey siri what's 220 kilometers in miles per hour It's not compatible. I don't know. <laughs> I forget it. We don't know. <laughs> I hope you have an answer as to what I should do because I'm not that experienced with motorcycle issues to know what's going on and don't have the big bucks to spend on an expensive repair job. Thanks in advance and keep up the good work. All right. So these are CV style carbs, Mikuni. I, I looked yep. it up on the parts diagram. Um, I think what might be going on is it's just not turning on the needle and main circuits and he's just not getting fuel in the upper RPMs. Yeah. there's definitely a, a restriction because it, it sounded like he put everything at stock. Like he, I wouldn't think that he'd be like, I'll oh, we'll just put a bunch of big jets in it. I mean, he didn't, he, he didn't say that. Right. He, you can wrench it up the top end and then you lose it, you know, it just roll and fall on its face. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah so, it sounds fuel delivery. So, I mean, he had bad fuel economy prior to the rebuild. Um, so usually with these carbs, I found that like the slides will get sticky and they won't open and they might even like flutter and then it gets rich and it's spitting fuel out and this and that. So, um, I hope when you did the rebuild that you went through and the slides are really clean and they slide nice and no diaphragms are damaged and they're not pinched. And then I'm wondering if he took out the emulsion tubes. Yeah. Make sure those are all clean. Uh, yeah. Cause stuff hides in there all the time. And the CV that, that they're operating with rubber diaphragm CV. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You you might want to double check how you installed those. I've seen people mess that up a couple times where like they'll get three of them right, but one of them wrong. And then that will affect the whole system. Um, I've seen that. Uh, you can check your spark plugs out. You can pull those out. Um, if you haven't done that in ever, then you can replace them and then run it again in that period of time when it's screwing up. And then by that time, the plug should have something on them. And you can reread that. I mean, check out Google or some plug diagrams, see what tells you what. Sure. Yeah. What, so you're basically you lean. Yeah. Uh, telling them to do a plug chop. Yeah. I mean, that helps because yeah. that's like the window into the motor, you know? Right. Exactly. Um, yeah. I mean, honestly, we don't know if it's lean or rich, but I would right. assume that, you know, it maybe it's lean. lean. Yeah. Know. It I seems lean to me. Yeah. So check the plugs, swap them, fresh gas, carb sink, maybe. You might want to try that too if you haven't done that. Oh, no. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, carb sink, duh. Cool. Yeah, and um, how many times have you been burned by a cheap spark plug? Uh, not, not cheap spark plug, but a spark plug issue, like having one foul or two foul or whatever. Yeah, and, no one's happened. Yeah, for sure. You know, and you're like, oh, man, it's just a spark plug. You throw a new one in and it's, it's mint, you know? So. Yep. I mean, I, I had a member inside the inner circle had a, uh, brand like a six, 2016 CB 650 F like the, the new four, uh, model, the four cylinder model on the 650 is awesome bike. And he would literally had this badass 
four wheeler with this motor in it. Okay. And he had an issue. Uh, he, the motor ran fine in the bike. Now it doesn't. And he's had, he had the harness. He, I mean, he had all this stuff. It was incredible. The last, do the last thing he did. We went through all these checks, checking this is your neutral switch is all because you, you know, you, you got to throw stuff up, up against the wall at that point because right. there's so many different things that, that can be wrong. Dude, put a fresh set of plugs in it. He was like, dude, it's good to go. Like it runs <laughs> awesome. Like it, yeah. like it, it would not start. It would not start. That was his yeah. issue. Fresh plugs. Boom. Yeah. I mean, sometimes even the, the plug will spark, Yep. but it's fouled and it just doesn't work. So just throw new plugs in it. Dude, I um, had a CBR 1000. Um, we had a customer. Remember that picture that I sent you? I was like perks oh, of working at the shop. Yeah. Yeah. So that, so that bike has 3000 miles on it. It's like a 09. Okay. Okay. So he, we're, we're selling it on consignment, but it, it ran like dirt, like in fifth gear, low RPM pool. It would just it, 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 almost, almost like it would jerk until it got to a certain point and, it, and then it would take off, change the plugs out. Runs like a, runs mint, dude. Runs mint. Nice, easy fix, right? Yeah. Spark plug. All right. Question three. Yes, sir. Go for it. You're a little quiet. Yeah, I'm tired, man. I woke up. Uh, no, I, I mean like audio oh. wise, you're quiet, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm you quiet. look like crap. So I'm, I'm explain. Quiet. I'm quiet in many ways. <laughs> How's that? Is that better? Maybe it's me. Testing, 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 testing. What? It is quiet. It's quiet. Hello, hello. Let's roll with it. Question right, number yeah. three. All right, this is from Frank. Um. Hi guys, hi, guys. My name is Frank from St. Louis, Missouri. I have been watching Cody for a while. Just started both just started both of you and really enjoyed it. I have a 1998 VT 1100 C3. Uh, this is a V-twin bike. Uh, Honda Aero with 21,000 miles. Had my baby since 2000. Some background. The bike was running a bit rough with some backfiring, but not too badly. Took it on a 600-mile ride with the local club to the hills of Eureka Springs, Arkansas. <laughs> On the way back, I broke down about 200 miles from home. At 70 miles per hour, the bike just shut off and I coasted to the shoulder. The bike cranked, but seemed like it had it didn't have spark. After a few minutes, fired up, ran for less than a, a mile, flatbed towed at home. That was last June. Finally, during the pandemic, I had time to tear into it. I did a complete rebuild of the carbs, replaced the fuel filter, ignition coils, air filter, voltage, voltage regulator, plugs, and wires. But bike runs great. Carb rebuild made a huge difference. The problem I'm having is a lifter noise at full warm-up. This is like a complete 360. Now it's motor problems. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, a lifter noise at full warm-up. Now, just for reference, the VT1100 motor is operating off of H, um, HVACs, hydraulic valve adjusters, H, hydraulic, autom yeah, automatic valve adjusters. They're like hydraulically fed. Yeah. HVACs. That, why does that, why do I feel like I'm talking about AC units when I say yeah, that? Yeah, because the HVAC is uh, yep. heating and air. But uh, I, I get what you're saying. It's a hydraulic. Yeah. Lifter. Lifter. Yeah. So, th so there's really no adjustment. We'll kind of get into that. In um, fact, I have one right here. Who do you? So yeah, this is off a car, but. Oh yeah. So here, here, this is where the oil galley is. And then here's the oil hole somewhere here. Yep. And then this guy just lifts up with oil. I Bingo. mean, so it, it's like spring loaded, but. Yeah. And it's, it, it runs solely off of oil pressure and the amount of flow going through that if if they're not full or there's an issue there they will tick like what he's saying right um and and you, you can't adjust them they do make shims for them but that's a nightmare um lifter tick comes and goes i've had the noise for a while now looked up on the internet and it seems to be to be common to these models which it is some of the su suggestions were to try some of the suggestions were to try different weights of oils and seafoam. I also hear it is a problem with the primary drive gear. Never heard of that. But I don't think this is the noise I'm hearing. Sounds like it's in the upper part of the engine. I usually use Mobile One 10W40 
but at this time I'm running shell full synthetic 15 weight 40 or 15 W 40. Sorry. I read that a heavier oil may help, but no luck. Any suggestions? Love the program. Keep it up. Thanks for rank. Um, so this is a common problem with the lifter stuff, but it is also can, uh, you can get the same result when the tensioners are worn out. So I don't know, Matt, if you've ever seen the tensioners on these model, but it's one of the, it's like the shadow 750. It's got like the, like, like that bow style tensioner mm -hmm. where it's spring loaded. And as it wears, it kind of drops down and extends the bow out onto the chain. So it's like spring loaded as it wears, it kind of bows out onto the chain until it cannot do that any longer. Okay. And at that point in change to starting to tear up the tensioner. Gotcha. Okay. And these things burn more oil than most bikes that I've worked with. Um, the 1100s. Either that or people are just horrible owners of these things. Because I see a lot of these 1100s come in very low on oil. Really? Um, and so my, my perspective is just that like, they are using more oil than normal. Um, so it could, be, it could be a lifter problem. It could be a tensioner problem. It could be a cam chain thing. Um, the only thing is you can't get in there without pulling the motor. Ooh, that sucks. That's, that's the number one thing, but they are bulletproof bikes, dude. They last forever in most cases and, um, very low maintenance. I mean, very, no valve adjustments. I mean, right. Very low maintenance, but when it needs maintenance, sure. You're pulling that motor. Right. So where are these uh, lifters located? On the top of the valve cover. So it, the, there's a, the very top of the valve cover. As soon as you crack the valve cover, you have, you're now in access to all of the, all of the lifters. Okay. But he doesn't know which one. We don't know which one. And there are adjustments you can do. You need like um, a dial indicator and you got to rotate the motor and watch this and watch that and put a little like mill shim in there and do this and that. As far as the sea foam thing goes, have you heard of people like where they're like the, like a hundred miles before they change their oil, they'll dump a cup of sea foam sea foam in there, yeah, absolutely. and they swear by it. Yeah, I mean, I've never done it. I've never seen a motor that has done it. I've never dealt with that. I don't use sea foam in the shop. It's just not something that that that, that we do. But I've I mean I've heard people doing it and they don't have a problem yet. Yeah. And Marvel Mystery Oil is another one. I mean, that yeah. stuff just like tends to break up sludge and right. stuff. Um, but you don't know if it's due to dirty oil or mm -hmm. it's just a design issue with the lifter, right? Yeah. Which mm -hmm. isn't going to help in this situation. Correct. So it, it's not that the lifters had trouble, but it's that the motor had some trouble getting oil up to the top end by the cams. And then the cams are feeding a bunch of other stuff, you know? Gotcha. Okay. So when people drop that oil level down real low while they're riding the bike, cause they're not checking it or whatever the case may be, it starts to show its true colors. I, I've replaced cam chain tensioners as soon as 40,000 miles on those, but that's not with, with every bike, you know, and that bike was beat up. So, do you, so do you got to pull the motor to, to change those out as oh, well. Oh yeah, dude, dude. Yeah, V twin. There, there's anything. There's, <laughs> there's no room on a V twin, man. I mean, no, yeah. I mean, they, they they tuck it in there, and there's no way around it. There is no way around it. Someone has, I'm sure, drilled to the side of the head and inserted the Zerk fitting, and now it's all better. But I don't. I, I have no <laughs> idea. And you need to pull the motor. Like that's what you have to do. Is it worth doing? Probably not. Yeah. Yeah, a couple comments on his oil. Uh, like Mobile One, is that rated for motorcycle use? I don't know. I don't know if he's using. Mo I, I I don't know if, if Mobile One makes a motorcycle oil, but I do know that Honda GN4 comes out of a Mobile One factory. Oh, really? Yep. I mean, if you think about it, all gas, all oils are usually right. They're just buying it from someone, yeah. and putting their name on it, right? Yeah. So, Mobile One's a great oil. If you're using core oil, stop. It's not, it's not designed for the same right. application. As we know, we have wet clutches on all Hondas. So um, 
your car is not designed to the car oil is not designed to run with that right um so you can try switching that as far as him using the shell full synthetic i think full synthetic is uh i don't know i don't know if that's if, if that's motorcycle oil right and you know as far as oil is concerned i just run regular dinosaur oil nothing fancy synthetic or anything i mean i just run regular oil you know i mean yeah. when when the when the service manual calls for it i mean if they start calling for like a lot of ktms and stuff like that starts saying synthetic this and that and yeah fine right but if it's if it just calls for regular oil i just stick to that i don't spend any more money than i have to as long as you change it on intervals yeah it just matter. keep just keep it clean you know right yeah i mean some some synthetics have been known to on the on some hondas to prematurely slip the clutch a little bit all depending on how you ride i haven't i've seen that on like a gl 1500 towing a trailer you know what i mean like yeah. cer certain applications it's not worth it but that's oil, dude. Oil is not a conversation we should. <laughs> yeah, I, and, and that's another thing. That's something yeah. I don't want to be debating about. Yeah, there's, I don't know. Some people hang on to oil. Yep. It, and, it, and this goes too with uh, two-stroke oil on dirt bikes. They'll, yeah. they'll talk about two-stroke oil. It's like, dude, who cares? Just <laughs> dump, dump it in your bike and go ride. You know, like yeah. I, I've never, I've never had an issue. You know, just don't so. use the stuff that you know at Seven Eleven where it says oil on it. Yeah. You know. Yeah. You'll be safe if you don't yeah. use that. And and don't use core oil in your motorcycle. I mean, definitely don't do that. I right. and that's how that's as far as I'll go with that. Sure. All right. Question number four. Let's see, is this uh any one Suzuki G S? Yeah, I don't think he has a name here. I didn't put it in there. Mm, nope. Okay. If you have a name, sorry, I I didn't I copied and pasted it. Sorry guys. All right, eighty one Suzuki G S six fifty. Recently acquired the, the subject bike, someone else's cafe racer project. Supposedly ran at one point, the individual did some Mad Max wiring with some on-off switches. I don't see a CDI uh, ignition unit in the current wiring, but everything I read says it requires a CDI. How does a CDI work and can this be bypassed? I've been looking for a replacement part, but I have seen output or input voltages on, a, on any parts and my guess is all CDI units are built differently depending on the size of the bike. P.S. Love the videos on YouTube and learn quite a bit from them. All right. So the answer is no on the yeah, next question. No, yeah. <laughs> no you, you got to get this, the, the CDI or the ignition that came with the bike. I don't think yes. there's any aftermarket support for this, this bike. Yeah, no. And really there's no reason to i think in 81 you know since it's cdi it's probably going to be pretty reliable yeah. maybe um not on hondas but maybe on this one uh, yeah um this but like gs650 yeah yeah is I this mean, still called a katana is this is the 650 still a katana you know uh well this is a gs so oh, okay. it's uh it's a naked bike yeah. or uh you know no, no fairings or anything Right, right. So it's like, especially now that it's a cafe racer. Yeah. Well, it, it'd be, uh, I guess, comparable to like a CB yeah, uh, okay. model, a GS. Okay. So, anyway, um, all right. So, if it's missing the stock CDI and all that, I would wire it up stock. I, I, I don't know if there's too much aftermarket support for this year and this make yeah. and model. Probably not. So, you're, you're, you're going to, be forced to go on eBay and find, you know, find the stock stuff and, and get it working. Yeah. Well, what I would do in those situations, cause I, I have a KZ 400 that I'm building for someone like a little tracker bike. Okay. And he had, I mean, he had Matt, I mean, dude, he had like weird toggle switches all over it. Starter button was on a toggle switch. So he had to like start it and then shut it back off. Boom. Like once it started, I just buy new harnesses. I like, I just buy a new harness and then I can cut out what I want from there. Cause someone probably didn't know what they were doing. Obviously. Yes. Your CDI matters. CDI's main purpose is just to send signals. It accepts signals and then it sends signals. Okay. Right. And that's all done with these crazy magic little components inside of them. 
call it like zener diodes and transistorides, wiki walkies and all these different things. And that doesn't matter. What matters is that CDI is waiting for a signal from said object, pulse generator, whatever. And it says, cool, I got that signal. Go ahead and, and allow this to fire or go ahead and transfer the signal to, to something else. Right. Okay, so it's vital and you cannot bypass it. You're never going to ride the bike if you try to attempting to bypass a CDI for an elect or yeah, from electronic ignition system. It's just, I'm sure someone can do it and maybe he's out there, but it's just not worth your time. Buy a new harness, buy the parts that it needs and then strip it down as much as you want, dude. Hack it just to the point where you just bought the bike, you know? Right but you'll have the right components and you'll have a schematic and say, okay, oh, that's what that brown wire went to. Instead of like a brown wire, which is now a yellow wire, which is now also a blue wire. And you have to figure out which is the actual wire color, you know? Sure. So, I mean, I've worked on a couple cafe racers and I've wired some from scratch. And well, first a comment on the CDI. Every model bike has like a different CDI unit. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm sure there's some common ones, but man, you're, you're not going to be able to retrofit something else in here. Yeah. So I think, I think we agree on that. Yeah. Um, but if, if you don't want a stock harness, um, Economy Cycle sells a lot of nice wiring products. Um, Oregon Cycle is another one. Um, are they making there's... like custom harnesses or no? Well, you can get the connectors. Oh, okay. Motorcycle connectors. Yeah. Um, and then with economy, they have the crimper, they got different, like millions of different colors of wires with the stripes and yeah. you can pick and choose. And, um, depending how custom this thing is and what you want to do with it. I don't know if you're, you know, uh, you got a little lunch box underneath the seat and that's where you're hiding everything. You know, I, I don't know, but in any case, I think we answered the question. So, <laughs> yeah, stick cool. with the stock CDI. Yeah, we'll we'll put those links in the description as far as those kinds of, those connectors and yeah tools. Yeah, another one I thought of was Vintage Connections. Does a lot of Honda stuff, but they sell terminal kits that are yeah. just like top notch. I love their stuff. Like they have like three, like you can get the female three terminal bullet yeah with a sleeve which is like nice. like that's awesome for ground and that yeah. kind of stuff all right guys thanks so much that was four questions in this episode um i think that's it for this one mm-hmm. oh you were just drinking a beer so make sure if you can check out our beer fund much appreciated yeah and that's pretty much it cody what's that email again where people can send questions broken motor show <laughs> <Be broken. laughs> ask, it was a 50 50 chance ask, ask broken, broken mono. Mono. dude it, uh, at gmail.com it oh. needs to be your <laughs> it's all good man ask broken moto show no no at, no ask broken moto at gmail.com ask broken moto <laughs> gmail.com you guys know it i know it we'll just throw the, we'll just throw it up on the screen there you go yeah <laughs> and that's how you get in touch with us send us your questions we are trying to stay on top and get them pumped out as fast as possible right now it looks like tuesday night is the best time for them to come out weekly um so thank you guys so much for just uh hanging in there with us and commenting on them uh we appreciate the feedback that we get from you guys as well as the questions because without you guys we wouldn't even have this so oh one more thing bro oh yeah new, brand shirt, new shirts huh? brand new shirts are out your beard's covering half of it. I know. But. <laughs> I know. Well, check them out on the site, motorcyclemd.com. That's um, cool. Who, uh, who designed that for you? So a uh, buddy of mine, uh, name is Daryl, and I'll put a link to his Instagram because the dude is phenom.com. Man, he does hand painting on helmets and all kinds of stuff. And he hand drew this. Okay. He hand drew, drew the, the, this design as a present for me, and I have a colored version of it up on my uh, wall and he did my last one. He did, he, he does all the graphics stuff and he prints it. So it's all local. It's all being done, but uh, awesome guy rides all the time, local guy. So it's, it's a great way for me to support him as well to kind of 
oh, um, awesome. use his designs. But I'll put a link for his Instagram because you got to see the work this guy does. You can send him his, your helmets and he can do whatever you want. It's incredible. Nice. No, that's a good looking shirt, man. Thanks, brother. Cool. Cool. Well, that's All it. Right. See you guys next time. Later. Later.